All right, team, welcome back. Uh, today is a little bit different. I am going to be chatting with you about some of the things that I think you need to hear um, based on some of my experiences with just shooting uh, APSIC Nationals in 2024. If you've gotten this far into the program and you're actually doing what you're supposed to be doing, going in order, this will be massively valuable to you. If you're just joining the program and you jump around and you're picking and choosing whatever videos you want to watch, you're probably not getting the most out of the program and this won't make a whole lot of sense because you still need to work on a lot of the other things. Uh, but this is good for people to hear. This is good for people that want to be good at shooting, good at activities around shooting, good at competition, good at just being a good person. <laughs> Uh, and so I just want to give you a few thoughts. I don't I didn't rehearse this. This is not like a scripted thing I have seven bullet points that I kind of want to discuss with you uh, It's just some of my findings uh, as I reflect on this weekend um, I shot well, I had some issues. I overcame some issues uh, I guess I can talk about the match a little bit um, on day one. I had three no shoots very very uncharacteristic of me, it was a three day event. And in the first, I think it was four stages. So the first two stages I had a no shoot in each. And I think on stage four or five, I had another one. So very, very uncharacteristic of me. Um, what do you do with that? You have, I don't know, uh, 20, 19 stages. I think you have to shoot over three days and you already grab three no shoots on day one. Do you just let go? Uh, <laughs> Uh, do you disconnect from what your job is? Uh, do you recover from that? Um, I chose to stay connected to what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so I had some issues on day one, came back strong day two, performed to the best of my current ability. I didn't try to make up ground by pushing. People like to say that they were pushing. I don't even know what that means. I performed thankfully to what my current skill is. And I think that's how you always feel good about your performance if you're performing at your current level of skill. If you're trying to perform like somebody else, you're trying to copy somebody else, you're not going to, at some point it's gonna bite you in the butt. And yes, yeah, sometimes you'll get lucky and get a decent finish or catch up a little bit. Um, but I am always happier when I am performing on my, on my level and I get the placement I get rather than uh, the very inconsistent rushing, trying, hurrying that sometimes you'll get lucky on and connect with. And then most of the time it'll bite you in the butt and leave you very disappointed because you made a lot of errors in addition to what you already had going on. So I uh, ended up in 39th place, which on a national level, that's a really good finish in my opinion. 81% uh, of the winner, um, person that won this year was Jacob Etherington. Um, he is a full-time, I think army uh, team shooter. That's, he gets paid to shoot full-time living shooting. Um, benefits, paycheck, unlimited resources when it comes to training and ammo, like a savage, right? Uh, Mason Lane was within like a half a percent, so an, another savage there, but tons and tons of great shooters came out and performed very well. Just to put it in perspective, like uh, the multi-time the multi -time champion, uh, Max Michelle was in 20th place, like he's a savage and like a hero of mine. Like it was a stacked, stacked uh, carry optics field they call it production optics in Ipsic, and I was able to grasp an 81% 39th place, which is for my current level of skill feel like it's very, very good, and it's going to help me move forward. So that's the, the synopsis of what happened at, at Ipsic uh, Nationals. Um, let me talk to you about like some of the things that I want to talk So f f the first bullet point is confidence comes from over preparation. People oftentimes will go to a, even a local match and feel nervous. Um, they feel like they need to rush and they want to go fast and I mean you probably have experienced this right like the beep goes off and you start feeling like you need to do more and the reason that you want to feel like you need to do more or you need to try hard is a an indication that you're not confident in your current level of skill you're not happy with your current level of skill and that's okay not to be happy with your current level of skill but trying harder at the match isn't going to be your solution right um, so the way you can feel some confidence and like diminish that nervousness, anxiety and all that stuff is to over prepare in training, uh, to the, so that when you show up, you know what your draw is going to be, period. You know what your reload is going to be. You're not going to have a faster reload. You're not going to have a, 
faster draw. You're not going to have faster transitions or faster splits at the match that you didn't have in training. So perform that. Um, and I think if you would just abandon yourself to over preparing to your current level at, you know, at home in dry fire or at the range in live fire and anything in life really, right? If you would just over prepare to your current level of skill and just perform that, I think you would walk away happy. Um, but people feel anxious and stressed out because of the lack of preparation or lack of trust in their preparation. In other words, you don't trust your training strategy and I think that's a massive problem. Uh, I noticed that a lot with other competitors and I, I, for the first, I feel like the first time uh, really just embraced that I am working as hard as I can with doing two, dry, two, two sessions a day of dry fire, going to the range maybe three, four days a week in the last couple of weeks. Um, really feeling like I am over preparing so that I can perform my current level of skill on demand, which performance on demand, you, you guys know that it's important to me. And so um, I noticed a lot of other people stressed out and trying and rushing and hurrying and doing things beyond themselves. And uh, I think it's a lack of preparation and a lack of trust in the training strategy, feeling like I have to do more at the match to keep up with everybody else. And I think it's a mistake. So to the best of your ability before you go to a match, before you do anything that you deem of importance in life, like prepare to the best of your ability and then just trust that what your preparation was, that's the best you can perform, the best you can do now. Now, if you don't like where you end up with that, then you have to go back to the drawing board and go, okay, what else do I need to train on? What else do I need to fix before I do this X thing again? All right, so that's one. Confidence comes from over preparation. Uh, two, everyone will make mistakes and you need to stay the course. Um, I learned that over the last couple of years because I have had like mistakes. Obviously, everybody makes mistakes at a match, but I have been in matches where I'll make a mistake and then I would allow the match to kind of take a little bit of a sideways turn. In other words, like I'll perform, underperform a little bit not to make more mistakes um, or I over try in order to make up ground. And I have learned over the last couple of years that that's definitely a recipe for disaster and I did not do that this time. Uh, my decision was, uh, as soon as I saw those things happening, I was like, you know what, next stage I'm going to again perform on my current level of skill. I'm not going to try to go faster. I'm not going to try to rush to like try to make up time. I'm also not going to underperform. I'm not going to under try in order to not have the error again. And so I think that's really important to, that you remember that you, can, you should continue to do um, what it is that you are able to do. So underperforming to avoid mistakes is not a solution overperforming or trying harder to make up ground is also not really a great solution now there's a probably a place for overperforming a little bit like if you're in the top three spots and you're you have a chance of possibly winning like a national title or area match or something like that all right maybe there's last, that last stage or the last two stages and you have maybe just a couple points behind maybe that might be the place to you know throw down a little bit um, I'm not sure. That's like a strategy thing, but it's left out, it left up to those like very, very high elite performer guys. For the, for most people, just do your job, uh, stay the course and don't worry about the mistakes you've made. Everybody is going to make mistakes. Uh, there will be, I, I saw multiple national and world champions at this match. And everybody's going to have an error somewhere. They're going to shoot a no shoot. They're going to miss a position. They're going to have makeups that they didn't intend to make up, to have and all that stuff. So just recover to the best of your ability and keep going, knowing that everybody's going to make a mistake, especially the longer the match it is, right? So a local match is only seven stages, but a two or three day match, there's more opportunities to make mistakes. Just whatever happens, recover to the best of your ability and keep going. All right. So don't dwell on your mistakes. Uh, which leads me to the next point, how you talk to yourself about yourself and, and how you talk to yourself. So how you talk to yourself personally, internally, and how you talk about yourself to other people um, is, um, is very important. You can't be the person that's constantly talking about, um, oh, I'm a dumpster fire, or this was a dumpster fire stage, or look at the thing that I did here. And I, I even see people like posting this stuff on the internet. I think it's really bad. It's not um, going to support your progress in any way. Uh, Self-deprecation feels good for a second. And then it's like, okay, how did that move you closer to your goal? So please stop posting on the internet 
your errors, your mistakes, your poor runs of things. Please stop talking to your squad mates or your teammates about like some bad thing you did. Like it's okay. Like if you need to debrief that, if you have a person that you're like, I have a teammates that I, that I get to um, shoot matches with. If you need to debrief that really quick, cool, debrief that. There. And as soon as you've identified what the problem is, instead of dwelling on the problem, identify what the solution is to fix that problem and think about that thing. Um, I think it's a much better way to fix the problem, move in the right direction and make progress rather than this like cheap, feel good, yeah, I really screwed that one up. Like that, that doesn't help you. So watch how you talk to yourself. Um, number four, this is probably the most important one. Let your dry fire carry you. Um, you, you don't need like the whole try harder thing at a match is just really, really bad. Uh, your draw is going to be your draw. Your reload is going to be your reload. Your movement, your understanding of uh, confirmation levels, all that stuff is going to be what it is. Let the dry fire work. The, dr the work you've done here at, in your dry fire room at home carry you. Don't try to, harder to draw. Don't try harder to X, Y, and Z. L trust that what you've done is what you, you can do on demand and just do that. Don't do more. Don't do less. Again, Trust your dry fire to carry you. Uh, I found that to be super helpful for me. Anytime I started to feel a little bit anxious or stressed, like in, in, a, in a manner of like, am I going to be okay with the stage? Is my plan going to be able to keep up with that person? I would immediately eliminate that and go, cool. What is it that I know I can do every single time? And then I'd go to that, trust the work that I've done and perform at that level. So let your dry fire carry you. Number five. What some people think is crazy fast is just a slow Tuesday for somebody else, man. I'm telling you, people would watch some of the things I did or some of my other teammates and be like, oh my gosh, that's crazy fast. And I'm like, no, that's like that very normal performance on demand for me. And then you watch somebody else, like a world champion guy that's like doing something crazy. It seems like it's crazy insane and they're just slinging bullets and then they absolutely not. They're seeing everything they need to see for their current level of skill. So again, going back to that, Fast and slow mean nothing to different people, right? It, your fast is somebody else's slow. Your slow is somebody else's fast. So be focused on your technique. Be focused on what you can do. And don't sit there looking at other people and go, oh my gosh, I'll never do that. Well, yes, if you think that way, you're absolutely right. You're never going to do that. The best way to do it is I am not there yet, but that's available to another human. That means it's available to me too if I am willing to put in the right, correct, meaningful kind of work. So... Just because it seems far out of reach, that doesn't mean you need to dismiss it. You go, yeah, I mean, that's cool that you can do that. That's not maybe where I'm currently at, but I can definitely move in that direction if I choose so. All right. Number six, be helpful. Pace targets, celebrate others, and encourage um, others when it's appropriate. Man, there was a lot of, like, European dudes on our squad. There, I mean, this, there was people from all over the world um, shooting this match. And, and, like, maybe it's cultural, whatever, but, like, some people weren't pasting, they weren't being careful to like, you know, be good squad mates and reset the stages. And so it leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. Just, just be super helpful. Be available when there's like a range officer that needs help or a target pasted, a piece of steel picked up, whatever. Um, I think people will remember that. Um, and you develop like a, a good persona. So again, this is not just pertinent to like shooting matches. Like when you take a class, be available to help, be supportive to other people. Um, when you're when you're shooting a match, absolutely do that. When you're doing other things in life, like people will remember that. So be helpful uh, as much as you can. Be available to help other people. Also, don't be super annoying by like being a um, squad mom or cheerleader when it's not when it doesn't seem appropriate. And how do you know that? It's like. If the shooter has just finished the stage and they're very upset because they like they did something clearly uncharacteristic of them, like you encouraging them is not a good place. Now, if somebody has been struggling for like ten of the twelve stages, uh, and they have a stage where they pick up a little bit and they do like some things well, that's the stage where you might encourage, like, "Hey, man, that was really nice. You did that, whatever." Um, so there's opportunities. Just have to be socially aware. You know, um, there's opportunities when you can encourage others. Um, a terrible place to encourage somebody is like somebody that's been crushing for two days straight um, and you know they have a bad stage and they're very upset about the mistake they made and you're like oh it's okay no it's not okay for them they're like very upset so let them 
let them do their thing. Let them do their reload. If you don't know what a reload is after a stage, let them reload the stage correctly. Let them figure out their mind stuff. Uh, so just be aware of that stuff. Uh, mostly from the helpful standpoint, if you don't understand the encouraging piece and when you should do that, just being like available to help. Pace targets, like as soon as somebody's done, go up and do your job. Um, if somebody needs a magazine picked up, pick up a magazine off the ground, whatever. Do that kind of stuff. People will remember that. And here's the last one. Be a good person. People will remember how you made them feel, not how you performed that day. I think this is a big one. Uh, I think it's a big one no matter what you do in life. People are going to remember how you made them feel. Like, yeah, uh, people will also remember like some world champions. You know, they'll remember some crazy, awesome performance that they had. But if that same person is a total ass, I promise you that's like very forgettable experience. Whereas if you're good at shooting, good at whatever you do in life, and you're a good person, you make people feel appreciated, seen, um, it will leave a lasting impression. Um, and again, you don't have to be a world champion for people to remember you. Um, I am very blessed to have met some really good people in the industry. And because of the connections I'm able to make in the industry and hopefully um, just be a good person in front of people, I've been afforded and allowed more opportunities. Um, and so I have really great sponsors and I have people that when I walk onto a range or a match or even like at the airport, I have people that like see me and go, oh my gosh, you're that guy. This is so cool. You, you know, can I take a picture with you? And like, we're, we'll talk about training or whatever. And it's not because I'm famous. It's not because like I'm awesome. I try to be a good person most of the time. Like I have my shortcomings for sure. Tons of them. But for the most part, when you're around people, when you're in your industry, whatever your industry is, or if you're just like getting into matches and whatever, be a good person so that people can feel like you see them, you appreciate them, you're not talking down to people. I know my joke in class is often like, sit down so I can talk to you at the beginning of the day and I like to talk down to people. Like, that's not a thing. That's not why people keep coming back to class, right? That's not, that's not why I have like some of the most loyal um, alumni on the planet and, and clients that keep coming to class. It's because I see you, I want you to be better, I'm invested in you. And those are all true statements. I genuinely want you to do well. Even here on this dry fire program, of course, I genuinely want you to succeed. I don't make two videos a day for essentially a couple bucks a week. <laughs> like, I, no, that's not what. I, that's not why I'm doing that. Right? Um, sure, the financial thing is motivates me. Obviously, I want to be able to provide for my family, but it's not that much money. Let's be honest. Um, I'd have to have thousands of people on this thing to make it worth it. But. You know what does make it worth it is when I get those messages and I keep getting them lately. Tons of people going, hey man, I'm the dry fire program. I'm making this progress. I've, I've done, I was able to do this. I'm able to do this that I wasn't able to do. I'm starting to compete. Or some people are like starting to do class up in competition. I've had people come through this program. They are now master level shooters who are as good or even better than I am. I love that. Um, do I want anybody to be me? No. But man, is there anything better than for a teacher to have a student get as good or better than them because they were like super dedicated to their craft. It's not me, it's them. They, they picked up the information just like you, hopefully are picking up the information and you're working on your craft to eat for you to be better. And I hope one day you can crush me in, in something, you know, shooting related or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, going back full circle to make people feel good about themselves, make people feel like you're a good person, you're invested in them at, in some level. You don't have to be, um, fake about it. Um, there's people that I met this weekend that I may never see again, but I was invested in them while we were shooting together for three days. Um, if they needed something, if they needed a bottle of water and I was like close to one here, man, there you go. Uh, your magazine is right here. Here's a towel, like, you know, wipe that magazine or at the end of the stage while they're looking at the scores, I'll, I'll pick up their dusty magazine, clean it up on my pants and give it back to them. Um, Maybe somebody else is like, you know, coming a little late to pace. And I'm like, hey, don't worry about it. I got it. I'll pace their target, whatever. Anything you can do to make people feel like you see them and you appreciate them. You, you treat them like good human beings. You're not sitting there with your like, you know, fancy jersey. I got my fancy Beretta jersey. I'm not going to make people feel like jerks because they don't have one or because they're not sponsored by a manufacturer. I'm blessed to be able to do that. And I want to communicate that by what I do and what I say. Um, not, you know what I mean? Like I'll just, I'll, I'll stop it there. I just want to make sure that of all those points, like this last piece is very transferable to other life things. And it's very important that you keep that. You want to make sure that you 
treat people in a way that they can remember you f for making them feel like a good. Um, uh, there, there's tons of people that when they get to a certain place, they're, they're like not cool with people, not nice to people. And at some point, that same person that you didn't make feel good, you didn't appreciate, you didn't um, whatever, you were maybe nasty to them or mean to them for whatever reason, that person may be in charge of something that can definitely help you. So from personal experience, I'm communicating this to you, I'm telling you now, like allow everybody around you to be like, like proud of you. Allow everybody around you to like appreciate you because you're a good person and so many things will come back around to you. Um, I would say probably 80% of my sponsorships have all been because of relationships that started years ago. I try to be a good person in, in and around people in front of people and then these things turned around and, and, and people called me hey man like you did this thing for me many years ago you you made me feel this way and you you helped me with this thing whatever and all these things are coming back to like now that i'm in a place where i can help you i'd like to help you back so from personal experience hopefully some of these bullet points will help you move in the right direction i know it's not necessarily just dry fire related we did talk about how dry fire can carry you in a performance and how to over prepare and all that stuff. But I think it's important that you keep these thoughts as you develop as a person, obviously for sure as a shooter. And if you go into competition shooting, these things are all very important. I hope you will take notice of them. I hope you will put them into practice. Um, and if you have any questions or you have any thoughts on any of these, or you maybe disagree with some of these, let me know. Um, I am going to be recording a bit more content here over the next couple of days. You're gonna see a bunch of stuff coming your way. We're gonna reinstate some of the uh, appendix stuff. I know for the last month or so, I've done a little bit less appendix work because I was focused on the IPSIC stuff. Um, but if you wanna see any content or you have anything that you have questions on, like some of the other people have taken advantage of, please ask and um, I'll get content that's relevant to you, important to you, and um, you know what to do. Get after it. <laughs>